Hello everyone, welcome as you join us for another of our Bible studies. It's the last actually in this particular series uh, of the symbolism of certain animals uh, in the Bible. And tonight it's the turn of the deer. Uh, we're looking at uh, different references within scripture uh, regarding the deer and symbolism around that animal. If you have a Bible, you're very welcome to uh, follow uh, the different references we'll be looking at uh, as we uh, come together this evening. Now, the deer uh, is an animal, of course, that is seen for many different things, many different attributes to the animal itself. And in the Bible, you'll find, depending on your translation, you may find the word deer being used, of course, or heart, uh, which is an old-fashioned word for it, H-A-R-T, or hind is another word you'll find as well, alongside doe and fawn, uh, different types uh, of, uh, of the deer itself. The doe, of course, is a, a female deer, and the fawn being the young uh, of the deer. There are only 43 through species of deer in the world. Uh, so the antelopes and certain types of gazelles and other forms of deer don't fit in to the true deer. Uh, there are only 43 uh, true deer species, which is quite small when you consider the amount of animals in the world that look similar uh, to deer. So we have uh, all continents in the world do have deer on them except Australia and Antarctica as well. So every other continent does have deer uh, present in one form or another. There are only six species in the United Kingdom uh, altogether. The largest in the world is the moose. The moose is the largest deer in the world and he stands somewhere in around eight foot and six inches. So it's a big animal, a uh, very strong and hefty animal, <clears throat> generally found uh, at the very northern part of the northern hemisphere uh, in uh, the world. And the smallest deer is called the pudu, and he is barely a foot high. So he's quite a tiny little animal, and you can imagine a dainty little thing at that size, about a foot high. There are about 45 references to deer in the Bible, so it's not as prolific as some animals, uh, but needless to say, it has uh, a lot of symbolism. Uh, used in the Bible and it is an animal that was pretty much exclusively if not completely uh, only found in the Old Testament is the deer and 45 odd references. Three of the main uh, symbolic terms uh, centered around the deer are that of purity, peace and innocence and you probably could relate to them when you think of a deer in the wild. Purity, peace and innocence. The first reference uh, we believe in the Bible is in Genesis 49 and feel free to open uh, there and verse 21. This is supposedly the first reference to deer uh, in the Bible and it says Naphtali is a doe let loose that bears lovely fawns. So there you have uh, the female deer, the doe and the sense of the young with her. Naphtali, of course, was one of Jacob's sons, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, Joseph's older brother. And in this particular passage, uh, in uh, Genesis 49, Jacob, their father, is about to pass away and he's blessing each of his sons in turn. Uh, and he describes Naphtali as a doe let loose, that bears lovely fawns. So there's something in there about grace, about fruitfulness and about freedom, which are all symbolism of a life in the Lord. You have grace, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ gives us grace to live for him. Grace from the cross, that he sacrificed his life for you and I. And we have the fruitfulness, uh, a life in Christ should be fruitful for him, bearing fruit as we serve him, as a life of freedom, not to do as we choose, but a life in all its fullness that God gives us, and the freedom and joy of eternal life, which begins now when we put our trust in Christ as Saviour and carries us on in uh, to eternity. So we have all that symbolism around this one verse, that sense of freedom, fruitfulness and grace. 
and the deer is a graceful animal. If you ever watch a deer, they're very sure-footed animals. They look as if they could break their leg very easily because they tend to be slender and long, but they're very graceful. In fact, if deer start to run, uh, they're very, very fast and fleet of foot. But also if they jump and they can land on rock and amongst stones and boulders and never fall awkwardly. They seem to land very, very uh, upright on terrain like that as well. So they're very graceful and very fleet of foot in themselves too. I want to take you on to the Psalms now. So we're moving forward to Psalm 29 and it's verse 9. And in here we see uh, another reference to deer. And it says these words. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare and in his temple all say glory. Now, in there it says oaks in this version, but you may find deer. Uh, in your version and what it's trying to get there is uh, the similarity I suppose between oaks and deer that they're uh, strong and upright and can withstand much as regards weather and the terrain they find themselves in so the voice of the Lord causes these to whirl causes them to move and only the voice of the Lord can do that an oak, as it says in this verse, or a deer in your verse. Interesting, the uh, connection there with the two, um, the two things in nature. And they have that steadfastness and, uh, and surety and uprightness and all of that. But the voice of the Lord can cause them to move. It strips the forest bare. There's that uh, analogy of everything before the Lord is not hidden. Everything is stripped back. And that includes you and I and our sins. Nothing is hidden from the Lord. He strips them all back. The very voice of the Lord commands us. And all in his temple cry glory, giving glory to God because of this. This sense of purity again and fruitfulness is in this verse. The fruitfulness of our worship before the Lord and the purity, stripping everything back. That you and I can be cleansed by the Lord and nothing is hidden from him. And uh, he wants purity uh, within our lives. And I want to uh, just bring you to Second Samuel uh, as a connection with this particular thinking on the deer. Second Samuel, so we're going back again, chapter uh, 22 and verse 34. Second Samuel 22 and verse 34. Okay. It says, He made my feet like the feet of deer and set me secure on the heights. And that's a lovely picture. There's a lot in that verse in Second Samuel. This is David, King David's song of thanksgiving, of God being with him in war and in victory. And David had many enemies in his time and he's very successful in overcoming them. He made my feet like the feet of deer. There's that thought again of deer being swift, agile, jumping on rock and not falling or splintering their legs or breaking their legs in any way. They can manage all sorts of terrain and they can run and they can jump some height as well. Set me secure on the heights. You may have seen deer possibly on television or program about them or even in the wild. You may have had that uh, wonderful experience of seeing a deer on high ground and looking down and surveying all its territory around it. And deer can do that. And there's that symbolism. Set me secure on the heights. When you and I are in the Lord, uh, we can see and be very much spiritually heightened and aware of other things in the world. Things that people who aren't in Christ may not see in a spiritual vein. But you and I, when we have the Lord within us, our eyes should be opened to things like sin, wrongdoing, injustice, all those things in the world. We're set secure on the height. We're elevated with the Lord and strengthened with him. We have firm anchorage in the Lord as well. Swiftness and agility. 
is coming out there, the feet of a deer, which David had. He was someone of great uh, war uh, strategy and uh, someone who uh, could certainly um, kill and put off enemies when they tackled him. So it's a, it's a wonderful verse there. And then looking at that with Psalm 18 now, we move forward again. Again, there's a similarity in that thinking about the deer. Psalm 18 and verse 33. And it's basically identical, as you find, to the second Samuel reference. He made my feet like the feet of a deer, set me secure on the heights. So there's a psalmist bringing it out to possibly David wrote Psalm 18. And uh, he certainly was around when he wrote the Psalm of Thanksgiving in Second Samuel and probably has replicated it here in the Psalm. And it just gives you that uh, extra strength and uh, extra uh, accentuation, really, of uh, the sense of the deer and uh, us and the Lord and how we can be like a deer and that security standing on the Lord's heights and in his strength. Staying with the Psalms, folks, there's quite a bit of stuff in the Psalms regarding deer. Psalm 42 and verse 1, probably the most famous verse in the whole of the Bible regarding deer. And uh, when you read this verse, uh, if you're anyway musical at all or knowing about, um, uh, shall we say, sacred music, you'll know uh, the very song this comes from. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. Uh, should I say the song comes from the psalm, not the other way around. As the deer pants for the water, you probably know those words. So my soul longs after you. And Psalm 42 is where that song is derived from. As the deer flows for, as the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs after you. There's a thirst for the Lord. All who are in Christ should have a thirst for the Lord. The deer longing for flowing streams. So my soul longs for you, longs for you. Not just wants you once in a while or when it suits or a Sunday and, and that'll do us. Longing for the Lord every day of our lives. You see, a deer will not drink from stagnant water. You watch a deer, <coughs> a deer goes for fresh flowing water, whether it's a river uh, or whether it's a moving pool of some kind. The deer longs for flowing streams to refresh itself. And in here you see that sense of trust and dependence on the Lord. Water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And the deer is longing for to be filled with flowing streams. As you and I, our soul, that's not just heart and mind, this is our very essence of who we are. Our soul longs for you, O Lord. Trust and dependence fully on God. A deer, like many, many other living things, needs water to survive. And do note the deer does not flow or want to drink out of stagnant water, but flowing streams. You and I should not want a stagnation in our lives with the Lord either. We are to be flowing for him, to be vibrant for him, to be passionate for him, to be growing in him, in the power and living reality of who God is. So it's quite challenging that we long for the Lord. And the, the word is repeated there in the verse. The deer longing for the streams, the soul should long for the Lord. Going back again, folks, to Deuteronomy this time. So we're going back quite a bit. Deuteronomy chapter 14 this time. And it's verses 4 and 5. And it reads this. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. Now, we did look at this uh, with other animals in the past, particularly the cow and the sheep when we had our weeks with them. And alongside those animals, the deer is seen as an edible animal uh, for the Israelites. Uh, also a permitted animal to be eaten because it has a cloven hoof, not a solid hoof. 
Therefore, God says, you can't eat the deer. So it's passed for that, along with those other animals. And you can see a differentiation even in Deuteronomic times between the gazelle, the roebuck, the antelope, and then the deer. Even then, uh, they differentiated between them. And it shows us today that there are only a few species of true deer uh, in the world. It's a clean animal with its split hoof and therefore not abhorrent uh, to Israelite or Mosaic law at that time. Now we move on again to Job this time, going forward in the Old Testament, Job 39. And uh, we're looking at verse 1 of Job 39. Coming towards the end of the very large book of Job indeed. And uh, you remember Job is based so much on a dialogue between his friends and himself after his huge suffering at the beginning of the book and losing everything in his life. And then his dialogue with God himself toward the end of the book. And uh, these are words from the Lord himself to Job. Job 39 verse 1. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Both questions to Job. God's really putting Job in his place here in the sense that there, you're just a human being, Job. You cannot fully understand my ways. You know, I am in control of creation. Are you the one that can give the mountain goat birth or the calving of the deer? I ordained that. They're my creatures. Yes, of course, they're going to mate as two animals, but who ordained that in the first place? And God's saying, you cannot replicate that as a human being. Only I can give that creative ability for these animals. And so we see there uh, that really God is teaching Job a lesson in his suffering. Job's all about the question of suffering. In other words, God is saying, you'll never get your head around suffering. It's too big for you as a human being to take on board. We have much suffering in the world and there really is no answer to it. How do we answer the question of suffering, particularly in connection with the Lord? Why it happens, how it happens, where does it come from? That human beings suffer. And God is saying to Job, the suffering question is too big for you, Job, to take on board. I cannot tell you the fullness of it at this time. Perhaps one day in heaven we will find out why it occurs. But that is one of the big questions in Job, the suffering question. And God is telling Job, you know, even you can't replicate uh, nature and what's happening there in, in regeneration uh, of young and all of that in nature. So how on earth are you going to understand what suffering is all about? Big, big question from a big, big book. But it's an interesting um, uh, metaphor here for the deer within that God's provision in all. God provides in all. He provided a beautiful creation for us to live in. And he's showing that in the sense of the deer here alongside other things. And to give thanks as we may overlook some of the beauty of nature and giving thanks within that. He's basically telling Job, stop moaning. Yes, you've had a tough time. But I am actually going to uh, give you restitution and restoration as well. Because at the end of the book of Job, Job gets oh, maybe 10 times as much back as he ever had. God blesses him again. But not uh, at this particular moment because Job is going through the whole question of suffering. And he's in dialogue with the Lord as why this happens. But there's provision by the Lord in the symbolism of the deer. There is that sense of uh, giving thanks because we overlook so much uh, in our lives. Even God's provision in nature happens. He misses nothing and makes sure that all continues to move forward. His care for the natural order, and if he does that, then he certainly gives you and I care, his greatest creation of all. Folks, moving forward again, this time to Habakkuk. Uh, not an easy book to find. It's well on in the uh, the Old Testament. 
and uh, it's after a little book called Nahum. That mightn't help much, but it's one of the minor prophets uh, toward the end of the Old Testament. It's uh, between Nahum and uh, Zephaniah. But we're looking at chapter 3 of Habakkuk and verse 19, the very last verse in the book. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. There again, you see the Psalms coming out and you see Second Samuel reference that we looked at coming out. The feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. Remember the analogy we looked at earlier regarding the feet of a deer and the heights. But look who we have to depend on to get that. God the Lord is my strength in verse 19 uh, of, of Habakkuk there, chapter 3. Deer will adapt to all sorts of terrain. If you take them away from a place they're used to, they will adapt to it. They're very, uh, they're very good animals that way, adapting to new ground that they find themselves in. Whether it's good or bad for them, they will adapt. And you and I may have to adapt in life with the Lord's strength. As circumstances are thrust upon us and difficult times, but also good times, you and I may have to adapt to a lot of that. But we need the Lord's strength within that to do so. Deer also return to familiar territory if they're allowed. They will find their way back to familiar territory, whether that is good or bad as well. And that's a picture of life for us. Human beings do not like change. It's natural within a human being not to like change, and certainly not too often. And we kick against it sometimes, thinking, no, I'm happy where I am. We like familiarity. And that's good in some ways, but it's sometimes stagnant in other ways, that you and I need a change sometimes. Deer can acclimatise uh, to new territory. And they do like familiar territory, but they can also acclimatise to new territory. And that's the challenge to us as we walk with the Lord. He takes us into all sorts of new places in our lives that we can adapt with his strength uh, and follow him. Because God is with us through all. The Lord is my strength. Habakkuk 3 verse 19. Then we go back again. It's uh, plenty of movement tonight. We have um, Lamentations now. Uh, and uh, it's chapter 1 and verse 6. Now, some people might say Lamentations is a sort of a bit of a down in the mouth book. Uh, coming from the weeping prophet Jeremiah, we believe, uh, wrote Lamentations. Um, and uh, that sense of him crying for the people because they were so far from God. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet for that reason. And Lamentations is some of his outpouring of his tears for those in exile who have walked from the Lord. But again, here we have uh, the deer coming out in verse 6 of Lamentations 1. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. The stag, of course, being the male deer this time uh, in this verse. We looked at deer and familiarity there a moment ago. They do frighten outside of familiarity. Uh, they can adapt, yes, and they, they can take to new territory, but it's still quite frightening for them. The deer, of course, is quite a gentle animal, uh, graceful, yes, but also an animal very much uh, down uh, in the predatory list as regards being a predator because it's, it's an animal that is a herbivore, therefore not a predator to any other animal life so it's well down the chain uh, whereas the apex predators uh, like to use the deer as prey you think of lions uh, and other big cats particularly uh, who will attack the deer and eat it if they can so they frighten easily in here is the sense that daughter zion has departed uh, all her majesty uh, so there's a sense of Zion is Jerusalem. The people are no longer there because they're now in exile uh, in Babylon who came in to uh, take so much uh, away from uh, the Holy Land at that time, destroy so much of it and destroy so many people too. So from daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. The sense of uh, not being with the Lord. The Lord is almost vacated the building, if you will. 
they're no longer with the Lord because of their sins and what they've done, and that exile is uh, their um, their outcome uh, of what they have done. Things have become difficult for them. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. This symbolism of pasture in the Old Testament is that sign of uh, lush and green ground, but being with the Lord, being with him, he's our fulfillment. He's all we need. He's the one we feed off. He is the true pasture. But the princes of Zion, the people and leadership even in Israel, have become like stags that find no pasture. Therefore, they will waste in time because they are no longer with the Lord. So that's a challenge to us and the symbolism in there uh, of the deer uh, for those who come away from the Lord will become those without his pasture. But then uh, better news ahead. We go back to Isaiah now, Isaiah 35 verses 5 and 6. And again, we see Isaiah throwing up some uh, metaphor here as regards the deer. 35 verses 5 and 6. These words are quite familiar to or should be uh, to us. The eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. It's a lovely verse, completely opposite from the Lamentations one. Uh, this is the return now of the exiled people uh, back to the Holy Land. And I'm sure as you've looked at it, you'll see lots of connections there to Jesus and what he did in his ministry. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, not just physically, but spiritually. The ears of the deaf unstopped, again the same. The lame shall leap like a deer, he healed the lame. And the tongue of the speechless sing for joy, he loosened the tongue of the dumb as well. Water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. A lovely sign again of the Holy Spirit being present, going forward with his people and strengthening them and filling them. So here we have a real symbol of return to the Lord and using the deer in the middle of it there. The salvation being given to these people again, no longer blind spiritually, but they see the Lord, they hear him, and they are no longer lame spiritually. They are bouncing with the Lord and in joy with him. And the tongue will sing for joy. Those in the Lord will sing his praises too. So it's not just physical, it's spiritual. And this return to the Lord, a sense of salvation or coming back to him. And uh, the sense of the deer leaping. A deer can leap some distance when it needs to. And it's escaping from a predator. And that's how much our joy should be in the Lord. Leaping like a deer. That we're no longer spiritually lame. But we're healed and we're rejoicing in the Lord. It is believed that uh, an annual height, or not an annual height, an average height, a deer can leap is 10 feet in the air. You can hardly believe that. That's some height. They can leap 10 feet in, in the air and they can run between 55 and 65 kilometres an hour. So you'd never catch one if you're on foot, that is for sure. So they're a very agile and very upwardly mobile animal. But here again, the symbolism of those in the Lord leap and they run with the Lord with joy and eyes opened, ears opened and singing his praise. Finally, folks, the last few things I want to share with you. Deer, uh, if you look at the Hebrew root uh, of the word uh, that corresponds to deer in the Old Testament, it's a feminine word. Uh, the word deer is feminine, like the word wisdom uh, in the Bible. Uh, the spirit of wisdom is always feminine uh, in the Old Testament, has a feminine root, as do deer too. So there's one up for the ladies there in both those words. But you can see the, the, the resemblance in all of that as regards a deer being motherly. It's a motherly animal to its fawns in every way. It has grace. It has beauty. All things that we may understand as feminine in many ways. Grace, beauty and motherliness. And you can see why the Hebrew root of the word uh, for deer has a feminine uh, connotation. 
Folks, I hope uh, that's been a little help this evening as regards the deer uh, in the Bible. There are other references. Feel free to look them up if you get a chance along the way. Some of them do replicate what we've already looked at this evening. But uh, it's an animal, as it say, again, with a symbolism of purity, symbolism of peace and a symbolism of innocence, uh, amongst other things that we've looked at this evening. We're going to look at a new series uh, next week. I'm not giving that away yet, but do join us again very soon. And we'll pray together before we finish. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the deer and all the symbolism around the deer in the Bible. Uh, that sense of purity and peace and innocence, amongst other things uh, that uh, you have shown us through the use of that animal. Lord, help us to learn more about you. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, we do know your grace uh, and uh, we know your beauty and fruitfulness in our lives uh, that the deer exemplifies in the Bible. And Lord, that we're uh, no longer lame spiritually, but leaping like a deer with joy by walking with you. And our eyes are open and our ears are unstopped. And Lord, our tongue is loosened to praise you all our days. And Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.